أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الله ورسوله أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam we thank the Almighty Allah for giving us an opportunity to be here today. We thank Him for His mercies that He's bestowed upon us. We bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except the Almighty Allah. We also bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His servant and His messenger. Whosoever the Almighty Allah guides is really guided. And anybody who goes astray has nobody to blame but themselves. Uh, today is a Saturday, I believe it corresponds with the fifth day of Rabiul Awal, 1444 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It also corresponds with uh, the first day of October, right? Yeah. First day of October, uh, 2022. Alhamdulillah. Uh, as usual, this is a class for Imam Hisham and uh, his Tara. So, uh, at least the brothers must benefit. The Almighty Allah created us for a purpose in this life. And until that purpose is realized, we will not be doing ourselves a great service. Now, most of him that not, we forget why the Almighty Allah created us. Because we live in a dunya that is very, very destructive. It distracts our attention. And we live in a time of the world whereby the world has seen more, you know, confusion and illusion than any other time in the world. The advent of social media has been a double-edged sword. We could use it for benefit, and there are a lot of people who are draining in it. They are drowning in it. Uh, I saw a video of someone I forgot, but the person was making a point about TikTok. And that's the algorithms that the Chinese use to create TikTok. Yeah. We all have you saw it. Yeah. They only make sure that the TikTok that is being you know accessed in China is only about education, science, technology, development, business. <laughs> That's what they make sure. Any foolish thing doesn't come there. Yeah. But the rest of the world. It's all open. They realize that people, <laughs> subhanAllah, sometimes I, I just deactivate my sometimes I just deactivate my my account. Because you don't get to get anything positive. And some people, <clears throat> no, Sheikh, you must be there, you know, at least your videos and stuff like that. And I'm like, there are people who control our thoughts. There are people out there who control what we see. The artificial intelligence is very strong. It's very powerful. The moment you just make a Google search on something, Everything else on your feed, on all your social media, is channeled towards that thing. That's what they do. So, for example, if you go on Google and then you search for a car, the system picks, picks it up. So, on Facebook, you start seeing feeds of cars. That's what they, they begin sending you. And all of a sudden, you realize that some company, companies will start sending you emails on cars. That's how dangerous it is. So this is the dunya that we are living in. So as a Muslim, if you don't pinch yourself from time to time, you will forget about the essence as to why you are being created on the surface of the earth. 
Almighty Allah says in Surah Al-Dhariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتُمْ جِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ عَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَقُ ذُو الْقُوَةِ الْمَتِينَ That the Almighty Allah did not create us human beings just for anything, but for us to come to the surface of the earth to worship Him. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ The Almighty Allah says He doesn't need any provision from us. I don't need them to give me food. The Almighty Allah never said that in the morning, come to his woman, come and sweep and clean and cook for him. He doesn't need that. In Allah, who are razzaq. The Almighty Allah, he is the sustainer. He is the provider. He is the cherisher. In life, uh, we are four groups of people. All of us in the world, we are four groups of people. The first group of people are people who worship the Almighty Allah. And the life is also easy for them. First group of people worship the Almighty Allah sincerely. And Almighty Allah has opened the dunya for them. The Almighty Allah tells us in Surah Al-Nahri, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ Anybody who does a good deed in this dunya, whether the person is a male or a female, or who a mu'min, and the person is a believer, we are going to give him a very beautiful life. Anytime I'm treating this topic, there is a man who comes to mind. I know a man back home in Africa, who is a millionaire. He is an engineer. He is a hafiz of the Quran. He speaks English, French, Arabic. And he is also a da'iyah and an imam. In his house, he has built a mosque, a masjid. And no matter how early you come to the masjid, you will not be there before him, before Fajr. I don't know, maybe he sleeps in the masjid. Allah. You know, he comes to the masjid at dawn. He fills his pockets with money. Because he knows that verily, maybe someone in that morning might need help. And then after Fajr, he is always the last person to leave the masjid. He will stay in the masjid, do his adhkar until sunrise and then he does his two nawafil before he goes to his office and his office is his home his house is so huge that first part is a masjid and then a boy's quarters for his nephews who is going to the villages to pick and bring them to the city to sponsor their education the next building is the place for his first wife the next building is a place for his second and third wife Someone has said, wife in the hey. <laughs> <laughs> The fourth building is for visitors. If you're a visitor, full building, story building, with about eight bedrooms, all furnished for visitors. And then the last building is his office. So if he's not in the office, then maybe he's in town taking care of some businesses. Mahal al-Shahid, what I want to say is that this man has been blessed so much. But then, those of us who are closer to him appreciate his deen more than his wealth. Because his deen is more manifest to us than his wealth. Mondays and Thursdays, normal fast. It's easy, that's easy. Every month he goes for Umrah. You see these kind of people, and you wish you are rich like them. Because these people are using the money for the service of the Almighty Allah. One day, a friend, a colleague of mine in school, you came, I was living with a man, and then he came. And then there was time for Maghrib. And then there's a normal Imam who leads prayer to. He asked Imam who prays, who leads prayer. And then this normal imam makes a mistake in one of the verses. I remember in Surah Al-Fuqah. He makes a mistake 
and then he was corrected by the owner of the place. My friend didn't know him. He only hears his name. But he was the one standing next to him. And then he saw the way he was dressed. He realized that well, this guy is just a rich man. He doesn't know anything. He's not a student of knowledge. So when he corrected him, after the Sabbath, he looked at him. And so I took him to the office to go and greet him. And then he saw the same man who had corrected the Imam. He's the owner of the place. And then he was like, La hawla wa he told me, he said, I said, well, this man is enjoying better than us in the dunya. If we are not careful, even in gender, he will enjoy better than us. <laughs> so, whoever is going to worship the Almighty Allah, the Almighty Allah is going to give you a very beautiful life. And if you remember from our, 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 our session last week, where we spoke about the mercies of the Almighty Allah, the silent mercies of the Almighty Allah. When we speak about a beautiful life, it's not only about you know having a huge pocket or having a beautiful home. Imam al Qurtubi, in explaining this verse, says that there are a lot of meaning when we say hayat al tayyibah, a beautiful life. He said, risk al halal. You work at a halal place, well, life is a beautiful life. Even if you make one dollar an hour, so long as that money is halal, that job is halal, you have a beautiful life. Forget about the people who make $7,000 an hour on haram money. You are better than them. I hope you understand the concept of a beautiful life. Because understand one thing, haram is very dangerous. In the hadith where the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, spoke about having a beautiful life by consuming halal, he said, ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ رَجُلًا يطيل السفر عشعة عفضر يمد يديه إلى السماء يقول يا رب يا رب ومطعمه حرام وملبسه حرام ومشربه حرام وغذي بالحرام أنا يستجاب لذلك أنا يستجاب لذلك The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was speaking about you know enjoying the good deeds of the dunya enjoying the good things of the dunya and then he was warning against consuming حرام and then the Prophet mentions a man Yutilu Safar. He is on a long journey. Ash Atha Akbar. He is dirty, he is unkept because of the long journey. Yamuddu Yadehi ila Sama. He raises his hands to the skies. Yakulu Ya Rabbi Ya Rabb. He says, Oh Allah, grant me this. Oh Allah, give me this. Wa Masharabu Haram. When he drinks his haram. Wa malbasu haram. His clothing is from haram. Wa gudhiya bil haram. He himself was fed haram by it. By his parents. The Prophet said, How is the Almighty Allah going to answer the prayer of someone like this whose every part is haram? So, if we want our lives to be good and nice, let's eschew haram. Wallahi, no matter how difficult and tight the situation is, it's better for you to get halal sustenance, no matter how small they are. During the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when a husband is going to town to go and look for sustenance, his wife will stop him by the door and then she said, she will tell him, "Ya fulan, ittaqillaha wa la taqul haram." Brother, be mindful of the Almighty Allah and then don't consume haram. Innana nasfati an nasbir ala al jui fi dunya. We will be very, we will be able to be patient with hunger in this dunya. But they will not be able to be patient with the punishment of the Almighty Allah on the day of Qiyamah. Because of haram. So risk halal is a good life. Good life. Risk halal Working an eight hour shift. And then you make twenty dollars an hour, but it is halal. Wallahi, that is best for you. And then that is what is also best for your family because if you feed your family haram, wallahi, you you're putting them into danger. And let's not the feeding of this dunya put us into all kinds of situations whereby we go and consume haram. Imam Qurtubi Fada goes on and says, "A good life is al qana, which is contentment." And this is one of the reasons that a lot of people fall into haram. 
Because he wants to live in a $5,000 condo. He wants to ride a $40 car. Or even $80, $80,000 car. He wants to wear $200 Gucci shirt. And then he makes only $60,000 a year. Or $20,000 a year. So what happens? He turns into something else. And then starts doing all kinds of things. Because he wants to meet that false standard that he set for himself. Or false standard that the people he moves with set for themselves. A few days ago, one of our fathers and chefs from Michigan visited us. I think three years ago, I went to Los Angeles with him. And then, we just went around town to see the place. I remember we went to Beverly Hills. And then we went into a Burberry shop. Burberry shop. And there was this shed. Just shed, you know. And I asked them, how much is this? And then they said, $2,000. <laughs> And I said, Allah Akbar. $2,000. Share. I said, yes. It's not okay. No problem. <laughs> and then I left. I didn't stay in the shop. I left. <laughs> we went to another shop for suits. Bijan. And I asked them, how much is this suit? And they said, it's $10,000. <laughs> $10,000. That's a suit. And then they said, yeah, but uh, this is not even the latest edition. The latest edition is still, you know, uh, the work, and that's going to cost about $15,000. And I told them, that boy, I need the latest edition. But since you don't have it in stock, <laughs> I, can't, I can't take it. I can't take it. I need the latest edition. You know, I have some meetings with some clients, and, you know, I said, okay. And there was a tie. A tie. $2,000 time. We went to a Gucci shop and a young Muslim girl, because she was in full hijab, she came and then she bought a Gucci bag for $5,000. She just gave them her credit card and then they swiped she. <laughs> and then they brought the bag, they opened it and they gave her the bag. She put her phone and her credit card and her car key into it and then she closed it. And I said, Rabbana, atina fi dunya hasanatan, wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan, wa qina adab anna. You see, if you see things like this, it should humble you. It should make you understand the essence of the dunya. It should make you understand that the Almighty Allah has made us into categories. And that you should cut your coat according to your size. If you don't do that, you do drugs. If you don't cut your coat according to your size, you, you do arm robbery. If you don't cut your coat according to your size, you enter into all kinds of things because you don't have kana. You are not content with what you have. You are always looking at what other people have. So that's when jealousy sets in. That's when envy sets in. And then that's what wizardry and witchcraft sets in. Because that's when you want to go to charlatans and go to spiritualists. Me, yeah, I don't understand. Uh, uh, I came with uh, uh, Hatil Amin. We came together in the U.S. We passed through all kinds of means to get to the U.S. Now that we are in the U.S. after 20 years, he has about three homes in Philadelphia. I'm still renting. I don't understand. You don't understand. Is this an examination for you to understand your <laughs> questions and answers? It's not an exam. So it doesn't matter whether you understand or not. <laughs> So I want to know what's going on. What's going on? <laughs> if you don't understand these things, tomorrow morning, or oh, tomorrow is Sunday, maybe the police office, the police they work on Sunday. Tomorrow morning, go to the Pennsylvania State Police. Not even for that Go to the Pennsylvania State Police and say you have a report to make. <laughs> what is your report? I came with Haj Lemin to America. Man. He's getting more money than, than I'm getting. I don't understand. I'm here to report him. The police officer, when he picks his baton, he's going to beat the hell out of you and then send you to the psychiatric hospital because you are not you are not aware. You are sick in the head. That is why it's very important you have contentment. Your one shirt, alhamdulillah. Your one shoe, alhamdulillah. 
Your one bedroom apartment that you are in, Alhamdulillah. Your 20 dollars and our job, Alhamdulillah. Do not seek to look at what other people have in terms of the dunya. They ride a luxurious car, they have big homes, they have huge. Uh, yesterday I was, I was reading an article and then you were speaking about uh, this yacht, you know, these boats that these rich people have yacht. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they started. And then they said someone bought his own for four million dollars. I was like, wow. wow. Someone said six million dollars. Ah. Hmm? On the yacht? Only the yacht, four million dollars. That's even that's even that's not, nothing. That's not One of them I think Steven Spielberg, the movie director, his yacht is almost 170 million dollars. So if you look at those people. So be content. He al kanaa tu fahfuha takun malikan. Lau lam takun laka illa raha fil badan. Fanzur ila man malaka dunya bi ajmaha. Al raha bin abi ghayr al qutni wal kafan. Contentment, wallahi, is the best gift anybody can be given. Fahfuha takun malikan. Protect the contentment that you have. Wallahi, you be a king. Lau lam takun laka illa raha fil badan. If you don't have anything in this dunya except your health, Wallah, you've been blessed. فَانْظُرْ إِلَى مَنْ مَلَكَ الدُّنْيَا بِعَجْمَيْهَا Look at the person who has been given the dunya and its entirety. هَلْ رَاحَ مِنْهَا بِغَيْرِ الْقُطْنِ وَالْكَفَنِي The day he was going to die. Did he leave the dunya with anything apart from cotton wool in his nose and then the shroud? All the rich people, tell me any rich man who went to the Akhirah with his 170 million yach. He's not going to take it. The way we Muslims even bury is, is, is a lesson. For, I know a lot of non-Muslims back home in Ghana who say when they die, they want to be buried the Muslim way. They've not accepted Islam. No, 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 no. They've not accepted Islam. But they say the way you Muslims bury with simplicity, with truth. Because back home, our non-Muslims, a corpse is an investment. A dead body is an investment. Because they want to keep the dead body in the refrigerator for three months or six months. Mm -hmm. And then they want to set the date for the funeral. And every member of the family is going to contribute something for the funeral. And then when you come to the funeral, there's a special table for donations and gifts. So after the funeral, they make millions. There are people that I know who go to the morgue and go and pick dead bodies that are not DS and perform funerals for them. Because they want to make money. So if someone, an unknown person, comes into the city and then he dies and then nobody has access to his family, this is who they observe. Two, three months. Yes, then they come and say, it is an uncle of mine who came to the village some few months ago. And we didn't know about him. Now he's dead. And then they organize a funeral and then they make money. Look at how the dunya is. I remember very well. Malik Abdullah, Rahimahullah, the former king of Saudi Arabia before Salman came. Malik Abdullah donated to the university that I went to in Niger. He gave the university $65 million for them to build a whole new campus. The day he died, I watched the, 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 the janaza. It is his sons who carried him on their shoulders. And they went and buried him in a no one cemetery like everybody else. And they came back home. That's it. Look at Khalifa of Dubai when he died. From the tower to the grave. Min al burj il al qabr. So be content with what you have. And eschew haram. We've taken much time speaking about this point. But the first person or the first group of people that any of us can be in is people who worship the Almighty Allah. And the Almighty Allah is good with them gives them. And when we say it's good with them, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're millionaires. No. They're okay in life. Alhamdulillah. They are not envy anybody. They don't fight anybody. They are cool with what the Almighty Allah has given them. And they are cool with their job. No matter how you know beautiful haram is, they stay away from it. Alhamdulillah. The second group of people is 
people who do not worship the Almighty Allah and then they are in serious trouble. This is also normal. It's also normal. You find them sinning, committing adultery, and they live in shambles. Their life is in a mess. It's normal. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً طَنْكَ Anybody who, who disregards the admonition from the Almighty Allah فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً طَنْكَ He's going to have a life of difficulty وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى He's going to be resurrected on the day of Qiyamah blind قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَبْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا Oh Allah, why have I been resurrected blind when in the dunya I could see that is the same way my verses came to you, my admonishment came to you, the imams and the shiuch were speaking to you. And then you forgot about these admonishments. It's the same way I, Allah, today I'm going to forget about you. But like sometimes if you find some people living in a disastrous situation, I want to say this. The Almighty Allah is not wicked. The Almighty Allah pays us what we deserve. If you don't put your life where it's supposed to be, you're going to be in a very difficult position. If you don't accept the realities of life in your life, you're going to live a life of illusion. If you don't have the means to buy something, buy the thing that you have the means for. And you'll be safe and free. But if you say no, what Muhammad is having, I must also have it, you're going to be in a disaster. You're going to be late on your bills. You're going to be late on your children's fees. You're going to be late in everything. You borrow money from people and then you run away. We will look for you, we won't find you. Because you want to live a life that is beyond your means. So you borrow money from everybody in the masjid. So you stop coming to the masjid. You run away from Wasatiya, you go to Algeria. You start borrowing from there. And then you run away from there, and then you go to Al Furqan. You borrow from there, and then you run, and then you go to Um. In the end, you run away and leave Philadelphia. So Philadelphia is not okay for me. I don't like the weather there. Things are not straight. And the job that I got there is not fine. You run away. You go to South Carolina. Then you, you go and change your number and then you go and start borrowing there. <laughs> because you don't want to live within your means. So you live in a very disastrous life. So a few days ago, I and Hajj Akbar, Hajj Abdussalam, we went to a store to buy, I forgot what we went to buy, we just went to buy some, some provisions, some sugar, some milk and stuff. And then when we were, we were coming to pay, a man came up to us and he was holding a can, a soda. And then he said, can you pay this for, for me? And Chef uh, asked him, I said, no problem, we'll pay for you. And then he went and then he came back and he said, I forgot, I didn't add biscuits. <laughs> He said he forgot to add biscuits. <laughs> and that's what I said. Chef, let's go. <laughs> said, Chef, let's go. <laughs> so, you see, believe within your means and accept the creed of the Almighty Allah. Wallahi, if you don't worship the Almighty Allah the way it's supposed to be worshipped, Wallahi, your life, no matter how beautiful it is, you'll always be in problems. This is the second person. So someone who doesn't worship the Almighty Allah and then he's in disaster. The first person is someone who worships the Almighty Allah and the Almighty Allah has given you a beautiful life. The third person is where the majority of us Muslims are. The third group. You worship the Almighty Allah but life is like this. Right or wrong? Yes. That's where the majority of us are. We worship the Almighty Allah. Yes. But then Life is not stable. Sometimes you are late on the bills. But then you're always here at Fajr. No matter how cold the weather is, you are here before Takbirat al-Ihram. 
No matter how difficult it is, you have time to do your nafila. No matter how tough things are, you don't forget to do your dhikr. But then still, you get that you know, appointment to go and meet to get you know, that multi-million dollar contract. Just a stroke of a pen, signature, and then you get a 200 million dollar contract and then the person falls sick. He doesn't come to work that day. Or the person dies. And someone else is brought in and the person says, he's going to review the whole file. The Almighty Allah tells us here that if you are in this category, it's one out of two things. The first one is Allah loves you and then He's testing you. You worship Allah, Almighty Allah, you are here for Khamsa Salawat in all the time, your atmosphere in the house is an Islamic one, your kids, your fast of the Quran, you yourself, you do your best, but then still, you have about eight kids, but you still live in a two-bedroom apartment. It's tough. You still, oh, still using that 1995 Corolla. And sometimes it dies on the way, and you have to push it to the mechanic. You face all these problems. But then, you are here at the masjid. Fasting Mondays and Thursdays, you do it. Even with your meager salary, you give sadaqah to the masjid. You give sadaqah to people outside. Maybe you've been wearing the same dress for the past 10 years. It's one out of two things. The first thing is, the Almighty Allah is testing you. In Idham al-Jaza, in Idham al-Bala. The magnitude of your reward is dependent on the magnitude of the test that comes in. No one goes to high school exam and then he's giving a PhD certificate. Has it ever happened before? You just go and write high school exams and then the people say, ah, this boy is very good, this is a PhD. No. You receive a high school certificate. The ones who go through the PhD courses are the ones that get the PhD certificates. That is why you realize that the Almighty Allah tests the prophets more than everybody. Because their reward in the Akhirah is greater and huge than everybody else's reward. Look at Ibrahim. Khalil Rahman. All these years, no child. Maybe you are here like that. You've been married for years and no kid. Look at Ayyub. Ayyub, a prophet of Almighty Allah, a wealthy man, he fell sick. Wife, kids, all gone. Left only one wife who stayed with him. His body got rotting to the extent that it was worms that were falling out of his body. When the worm fell out, he picks the worms and puts them back and says, Go back, this is where the Almighty Allah has placed your food. It got so severe, it got to a point where Ayub said, Ya Allah, you can test me in my body with whatever you want. But Ya Allah, don't let this disease touch my tongue because I want to have the opportunity to always say, La ilaha illallah. One day his wife asked him, Ya Nabi Allah, wouldn't you ask the Almighty Allah to heal you? And then he told her, Honey, he said, Yes. How many years were we living peacefully without sickness? Everything was smooth and fine. And then she said, 70 years. And then he asked her, How many years now are we suffering and then in chaos and calamity? She said, 18 years. And then he said, You see, when we weigh the two, we were enjoying for 70 years. We never complained and say, Ya Allah, the enjoyment is too much. Now just give us more sickness. We never said that. But now that we are suffering for just 18 years, I don't have the moral rights to ask the Almighty Allah to grant me health. Wait! When we get to 70 years in the suffering, then we have every right to ask the Almighty Allah to grant us health. How long have you been suffering? That you think the Almighty Allah is annoyed with you, he has forgotten you. So you won't worship the Almighty Allah. What has been your suffering? What has been your test that you think that the Almighty Allah is not worth worshipping again? This is a you. And this is the situation that he was in. One day his wife went to look for food. 
And then their neighbors gave them gave her a bread belonging to a boy who had slept. So when she came, he was asking her, where did you get this food from? Look at this man who is sick. He can't go anywhere. It is his wife who is going to look for food for him. But then he wants to make sure that the food that she brings is halal. You and I, we don't care. You know, it is the rule of condition. So <laughs> let me take it. Not a you. Not a you. So she, he asked her, where did you get the, food, the bread from? She said, no, our neighbors. It belongs to a son of the neighbors. And then he was playing and then he forgot and then he slept. So they gave me the bread to bring to you. And then he told her, return the bread back to them. And then she said, they gave it out of their own volition. It's not as if I asked them. How would they feel if I return the bread back to them? And then he told her, tell them that I and you say that you should return the bread because I don't want the young man to wake up. And then he finds, he looks for his bread and then he doesn't see the bread and then he cries. I don't want to be the reason why that boy will cry. So you might be facing all kinds of struggles, all kinds of situations. Wallahi, the Almighty Allah has not forgotten about you. It is a stepping stone to something great. If the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Aisha says, we, 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 we live with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for months and months, and then fire has not been kindled in the house for us to even cook food. So what are you complaining about? I'm not saying your complaints are not legitimate. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that whatever struggles you find yourself in, look at these people who are better than us. People who are closer to the Almighty Allah more than us. People who the Almighty Allah love them more than us. People who love the Almighty Allah more than us. But they find themselves in this situation. Ayub was sick. Zakaria didn't have kids. Yonos was dumped into the sea, into the belly of the whale. So what is your challenge? That the Almighty Allah won't solve for you. That you think that by disobeying the Almighty Allah, that's the way to go. Or by looking at other avenues for the solution, is that the way to go? It's not the way to go. So remain steadfast. In all these, you know, storms, in all these hurricanes that life brings you, the most important thing is that your relationship with the Almighty Allah should be very strong. I say, when life knocks you, before you land, make sure you land in the position of sujood. So that as you land, you don't just land flat, you land in sujood. Because if you land in sujood, the Almighty Allah will pick you back up. It's very important. And all the situations that we find ourselves, the Almighty Allah is always ready to help us. So if you find yourself that you're worshipping the Almighty Allah, but still life is not going on well for you, then it means it's the Almighty Allah that is testing you. In Surah al kabut the Almighty Allah says, Alif Lamim, Ahasib al Nasu, An Yutraku, An Yakulu, Amenna, Ohum, La Yuftanu. Do people feel that when they say La ilaha illallah, that is the end, the Almighty Allah is not going to test them? وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ I, the Almighty Allah, tested those who came before them. فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ That is the way the Almighty Allah uses to separate those who are truthful and then those who are lies. Tests. So, don't worry. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. That this is the condition that I'm in and the Almighty Allah is testing me because he's going to give me a greater reward in this dunya even before I go to the Akhirah. So category 3, that is where all of us are in. But category 3 is divided into two. There's A and B. The A are those who worship the Almighty Allah sincerely and then they have a problem. The category B are people who worship the Almighty Allah but still have problems because they are munafiqeen. In their hearts are disease. 
في قلوبهم مرض. The problem of hypocrisy and nifaq is that it's a very very dangerous entity. It is not written on the face of anybody. And you might be doing something, feeling that you are getting closer to the Almighty Allah, but in reality you are a hypocrite. That's the truth. You come to the masjid so that people will say, ah, that's for this guy, he's very good. Not because you are coming to worship the Almighty Allah. You help the poor so that people will say, ah, this guy is very good. Or you give khutbah and lectures so that, wow, uh, this guy is he's an orator. He speaks. But why? Remember those of us who stand in front of you or sit in front of you to give lectures. Always remember us in your prayers. Well, I always remember us in your prayers that the Almighty Allah grant us ikhlas. It's very, very important because if we don't have ikhlas in what we do here, all this knowledge, all this ayat, all this hadith that is flowing to, from our heads to you, you will climb over us. We will be bridges for you to cross over to Jannah and then we the bridges will be sent into hellfire because we don't have a class. There is a hadith of Abu Huraira where the Prophet Muhammad says that the first three people to go to Jahannam, the first three people to go to Jahannam is the first person who a scholar. Yes. And someone says he. Yes. The first three people to go to Jahannam, the first one of them is a scholar, a sheikh, a alim, a lama, maulana, mufti, imam. He has taught people. He has written books. He has done da'wah across the world. He comes to the akhirah. And the Almighty Allah is judging him. You've done this, yes. You've done this, yes. You've done this, yes. You've went to India. You've gone to Pakistan. You've gone to Africa. You've taught people, yes. But you don't have anything with me. Ya Allah, why? Because you did it so that the people of Wasatiyah will say you have a very beautiful voice. You didn't do it because you want me, Allah, to reward you. The people of Wasatiyah clap for you. That is your reward in the dunya. In the akhirah, you have nothing. Military police sending him to Jahannam. You see how dangerous it is. The second person is a rich man. He has donated huge amounts of money. Help the poor, help the sick, widows, orphans. He helps. But then he does it so that people will say, what a beautiful gesture from this man. Some of them, even if, if, if you come to the Muslim, you don't mention that, oh, so-so-and-so has given us $5,000, he's not happy. The Almighty Allah will say, yes, you did it. But you didn't do it so that you need my reward. You wanted the people to praise you. They praised you back home in the dunya. In the akhirah, you have nothing. The third person is the one who was going for fees, jihad fi sabirillah. He comes to the masjid, he cleans the masjid, he sweeps the masjid, he takes her off the washroom, he takes her off everything in the masjid. But then he does so that people will say, if you need anything in the masjid, he's the go-to guy. I'm not saying that uh, if, if people praise you for what you do, it's wrong. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is, whether they praise you or not, your intention or your ikhlas must be sincere, and that's it. So that their praise will just become, you know, light upon light for you and that's it. But that, that should not be the standard for you that people must speak good about me. For what I'm doing, that you have a problem, the ikhlas is not there. The nifaq sets in. So there are some people, they worship the Almighty Allah, but still they are finding life tough because they are not worshipping the Almighty Allah sincerely. They're doing it so that people will what? Who praise them. The Almighty Allah says concerning these people that وَلَنُذِيقَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَتْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجُعُونَ Ay, the Almighty Allah will give them a taste of the lesser punishments in this dunya before they come to the akhirah so that they will repent. 
So if you are worshipping the Almighty Allah with hypocrisy, with double standards, and then your life is not moving on smoothly, it is a warning from the Almighty Allah that, hey, check yourself and return back. It's a warning from the Almighty Allah. You worship Allah with hypocrisy, or you have some things that you do under the bed, and stuff like that, in secrecy, and stuff like that. You, you envy people, you, you have jealousy for people, you hate people, you don't want people to have good things. But then in the masjid, you are there at the forefront. Even your beard is taller than me. Your nisfusa is up there. If you stand to pray, Allah, Allah, Akbar. As if Abu Huraira has come back to our time. That's how you stand. Only because people to praise you. Not because it is sincerely between you and the Almighty Allah. And then you realize that life is not moving on smoothly, then it is a wake up call from the Almighty Allah for you to return. That is why istighfar and tawbah is very important. Very, very important. And you realize in my lectures, this, is, this always comes in tawbah and istighfar. For all of us, for all of us. It is not only the non Muslims that must do tawbah to come to Islam. No, 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 no. Tawbah is for you and I. For two in Allah, ayyuhal mu'minuna. That's what Allah says. Tawbah is for those who believe. The mu'minun, they are the ones who do tawbah. And whether we like it or not, one way or the other, we will have potholes in our deeds. So it's important we have that. Because, you see, this heart here, this muzzle, is very dangerous. It's a double-edged sword. It can lead you to Jannah. It can lead you to Jahannam too. All you need to do is always check it. Change the engine oil here. It's very important. The engine oil, you change it. Check the brake fluid of this engine here. It's very important. Check it all the time. All the time. Check it. Because if you don't check it, if you don't have a renewal of your iman, iman all the time, this thing here is going to rust. And when it rusts, you have a problem. Always check your relationship with Almighty Allah. Always have a quiet time where you sit down and then you reflect and have a meditation with Almighty Allah. About the mercies of the Almighty Allah in you and your own shortcomings and your iniquities. Have that relationship with Almighty Allah. Have that conversation with Almighty Allah concerning your life. And this thing will always be healthy. But then if you always look at the dunya and what the dunya offers, this is not going to be healthy. Our time is fast spent, but one more point. And the last point. We spoke about four people, right? We said the first person is someone who worships the Almighty Allah and the dunya is smooth for him. The second person is the person who doesn't worship the Almighty Allah and he's in disaster and chaos. That's normal. The first two are normal. The third person is where most of we Muslims are in there. That is, we worship the Almighty Allah but then life is not smooth for us. And in this category, number three, we have A and B. The A people are the ones who worship the Almighty Allah sincerely but then life is very, very tough for them. We say it is a test from the Almighty Allah. And inshallah, they will get their good results in this dunya before the akhirah. And then the B part is those people who worship the Almighty Allah, but then with hypocrisy. They, that is a test from the Almighty Allah, a sign for them to repent and then return to the Almighty Allah. The last person is someone who doesn't worship the Almighty Allah, but the life is beautiful for him. Two of us. There are a lot of people like that. They don't care. Some of them even curse the Almighty Allah. Some of them even say that there is no God. But they make millions. They are rich people. They have beautiful life in terms of the worldly things. But then you know all the time that these people have depression. Yes. Almost every year we hear that someone has committed suicide. And then you look at the worth of the person in the dunya. Yes, millions. <laughs> what is his business killing himself? No. You see, the sukun <coughs> or the tranquility that Islam gives us, wallahi, is something that the mind cannot comprehend. It's something
something that the non-Muslims always they can't understand. For example, back home in Ghana, when it is Eid al Adha, you find that the Muslim, no matter how poor he is, he can get at least a goat or a ram to slaughter. But the Muslims, seven people can buy one small goat to share amongst themselves. But the Muslim poor man, he will buy his ram and then he will give meat to these wealthy non-Muslims. And they are like, you people, I don't, we don't understand. What's the secret? That we are doing better than you in terms of the dunya, but then the contentment you will have in life is something that we don't understand. It's because of Islam. Because Islam regulates our behavior. Islam, you know, gives us that education, that nurturing, that we are here for just a small amount of time and then we leave and go. So we have that peace, we have that tranquility in our hearts. So some people do not worship the Almighty Allah. But then the Almighty Allah gives us the dunya. The Almighty Allah tells us about these people. When they disobeyed or forgot or they, they disregarded what they were being admonished with. The verses of the Almighty Allah, the teachings of Prophet Muhammad The Almighty Allah is speaking about Kufar here. The Kufar who disobeyed. They didn't listen. They closed their ears. They don't want to listen to the word of the Almighty Allah. Punishments are, Allah said, We opened all the doors of the good deeds for them. We opened the dunya for them. The more they curse the Almighty Allah, the more the Almighty Allah opens the dunya for them. Until they get to a point whereby they are content with what they have. They are okay because they spent 20 years insulting the Almighty Allah and then you the Muslims have been doing al and then the Almighty Allah is not destroying them. Some of the Mufassirin say that when, the, when Musa alayhi salatu wasalam prayed that, Yo Allah, destroy Fir'aun, the Almighty Allah didn't answer that prayer until after 40 years. 40 years. So sometimes there are some kuffar who insult Allah. They insult the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They do all kinds of insane and bad things against the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then you do al qunut and the person doesn't die. <coughs> Nothing happens to a person. The person even gets bigger endorsements. And it tells you, this is even proof that your God is... Until they get to a point whereby now they are relaxed. Do you know that? Oh, that the punishment of the Almighty Allah comes just one time. So if you find someone not worshipping the Almighty Allah and then they are living good and then you worship the Almighty Allah and the life is not good for you and like, oh no, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong to the Almighty Allah. It's how the Almighty Allah chooses to do his things. One day Musa alayhi salatu was passing by the riverside. And the two people were fishing. This first one would say, Bismillah, and then he would throw his net into the river. And then he wouldn't catch any fish. This guy would mock at him. And then he would mention the idol of his village. And then he would throw the net, and then he would catch fish. And then this guy would say, Bismillah, and then he would throw the net, and then he wouldn't catch anything. This guy would throw his net, and then he would catch more fish. And then this guy, he's not, he's not lost hope. He threw his net, and then the net caught one fish. So he was trying to pull the net, to pull the fish out. After pulling the fish out, the fish slipped through his hand and went back into the water again. And Musa, when he went to meet the Almighty, he said, Ya Allah, I've seen something that is... I can't phantom. This guy is mentioning your name. Bismillah, Bismillah. But he's not getting anything. This guy is mentioning his idols and he's getting. Ya Allah, what's the secret here? And Allah Jalla Allah said, Musa, you see that guy who is mentioning my name, Bismillah. I love to hear his voice. I love to hear his voice. 
Tell him. All his fish is in Jannah waiting for him. <coughs> if he wants, I will send them all to, for him to the dunya for him to eat all of them. And the akhirah he has nothing. But then if he also wants, you should relax. His fish is waiting for him in the akhirah. You see that guy, I don't want to hear his voice. So I'm giving it to him so that he goes away. <laughs> so when Musa came, he told the man, he said, Allah says, I should tell you, that he has packed fish for you in Jannah. But if you want, he's going to send the fish for you here to do in the dunya for you to eat. He said, Musa, tell the Almighty Allah, I don't even need the head of even one of the fish. I don't need them here in the dunya. You should keep it for me in the akhirah. Maybe this is the kind of situation we find ourselves in. You say Bismillah, and then you catch no fish. Someone calls something else, and the person catches, catches fish. Finally, Musa was going to meet the Almighty Allah another, in another episode. And then he meets someone who said, Musa, please, when you go and meet Allah, I have a message for you. Ask Allah, what did I do wrong that me, I don't have money? Just ask Allah, what did I do wrong? I'm ready to change because all my colleagues are getting it. Me, 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 only this one dress 10 years. Why? He says, okay, no problem. After moving for some few minutes, he met another man who was on the horse and pomposity and pageantry and people were around him. He said, hey, Musa, wait, wait, wait. I have a message for you to Allah. So what's the message? He said, when you go, tell Allah that the money is too much. He should reduce it for me. <laughs> In this world, now, I now, I met someone who said, yeah, he said, he, he said, he asked Allah for 16 billion dollars as toothpaste money <laughs> before the real money comes. So, and that's crazy. So when Musa went and met the Almighty Allah, he was living in the Almighty Allah said, Musa, didn't some people send you to me? Say, yeah, 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 Allah, forgot it, Allah, you know. Allah said, yes, I know, but since they gave you the message, you should say it. You should deliver the message. And Musa delivered them. And the Almighty Allah said, Musa, you see that guy who doesn't have anything. Tell him that the day he stops envy and jealousy of other people, I, the Almighty Allah, will give him dunya. If he stops envying people, if he stops hating people for what I, Allah, has given them, I, the Almighty Allah, will give him. And the second person telling him, the day he stops thanking me, Allah, I will stop giving him risk. If he stops saying, Alhamdulillah, I will stop giving him risk. So he came and then he met the first person and then he said, the first person said, Ya Musa, what did Allah say? I said, the risk is too much. The money is too much. Reduce it. And Musa said, Allah said, I should tell you that the day you stop thanking him, Allah, the risk will stop flowing. He said, Musa, he said, yes. Tell Allah that, as for thanking him, I've not yet even started. <laughs> I've not even yet started thanking him. So the risk is going to continue. So always be thankful for what the Almighty Allah has given you. Well, that's the secret. وَإِذْ تَحَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ and the other person, Musa told him, Allah says, you, your problem is in the heart. You are jealous and you are envy of other people. The day you stop, you get the dunya. He said, Musa, when you go tell Allah from today, I'm stopped. I don't think there's time for you.